watching Satlitch TV. I am James Cousineau in Vancouver, British Columbia. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Calistan in Conversation. Over the last week, I've had the privilege of speaking with many people who were in attendance to either place their votes in the Khalistan referendum at the Surrey Gurdwara or those who have come into town to support the vote. In this episode, we'll chat with Jagdeep Singh, a self-proclaimed Sikh activist, and let's head over to that conversation now. Tomorrow, we're going to vote on a question of independence for Punjab, which is we want uh, secession from, from India. The Sikhs decided to live with India in 1947, and but now, after 75 years, the how the India governed the Punjab, we don't want uh, Punjab to be governed by India anymore. So we want to decide our political status, and we want we're going to vote tomorrow for independence of Punjab, a non-binding referendum, uh, which is, uh, I can say, after UK, Italy, Geneva, Austria. Toronto, Australia, now in Surrey, BC. So uh, we're going to vote tomorrow. Excellent. And what kind of numbers do you anticipate for people coming out tomorrow? In more than 100,000. 100,000. Excellent. So, and for any of the viewers that may not know uh, that the location was changed from the local school to the Gurdwara here on Scott Road. Yes, the location was changed uh, because of uh, interference from India. The Sikhs, uh, uh, that's a foreign interference in Canada, which is uh, Prime Minister Trudeau has mentioned recently when he was on his way to India. So from Singapore, uh, the news came that he, uh, Prime Minister Trudeau said if he had a chance to meet with uh, President Modi, Prime Minister Modi, he will discuss the issue, he will raise the issue of Indian interference in Canada. Right. And uh, when you read the article, in global news, uh, they mentioned about Sikhs in the Khalistan. So only reason uh, for the Indian interference in Canada is because of uh, the Khalistan movement. Right. The Canadian government uh, gave right to people, to the, to the Sikhs, so they can uh, exercise their vote, voting right, which the Canadian institutions are actually uh, established to protect the uh, fundamental rights of Canadian people. Right. So when we when we talk about uh, the the location of uh, event was cancelled from secondary school, command of secondary school, it is a direct interference of Indian influence in Canada, and 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 the reason they gave, which is uh, the picture of a gun. Right. But that gun, if you see that picture clearly, we are denouncing yes. the violence, denouncing the gun that India used. And using currently that Indian gun, guns has been hired uh, to kill one of uh, the uh, organizer of this event, right. uh, who was the president of this Gurdwara, Hardeep Singh Nijar. He yes. was gunned down uh, here at the temple, and we believe uh, these guns were hired by India. So you can imagine if Sikhs in Canada are being stopped and uh, to st to exercise their their right to vote. So you can imagine what Sikhs in India are facing in current right. Indian regime. Yeah, and that's uh, very visual and very, um, I, would, I would say very visual, but in a lot of ways it's being covered up by the India government too. When you look at regions such as Manipur with the executions that uh, videos have leaked out of women being paraded naked through the streets and executions in the middle of the streets of women and minorities uh, in terms of religious or otherwise. So it's very important i think for the caucasians and canadians as well as others around the world to understand why this referendum is so important uh of course the successive indian governments have used the same policy the which right. one you are seeing now these policies are being used for from 1947 right so what happens in what hap what's happening in manipur and what's happening in Punjab or other parts of India. So when India called herself a largest democracy and shutting down the internet in a state like, like you said, Manipur, it's yeah. actually they're covering up their, their sins. Right. They don't want, they don't want actual reporting to, to, to go out. Even right. though some of the reporters who were reporting on Manipur, they were even uh, uh, booked under the law 
for spreading the false information. So India, India has the all all their institution, their all the institutions are being used to suppress the people. Right. Otherwise, they were supposed to use to you know give give right to the people and to protect the people. Protect the people. Right. But their institutions are being used to kill the minorities. And do you think that it's uh, highly under? known or covered up the measures that the government in India is taking against journalists in terms of imprisoning or uh, when they just disappear, uh, when they're reporting anything negative about the Indian government? Well, uh, it's not it's not new in India. It might be new for the Western world because uh, they had a faith in India that India is on their side on a world order, the current world, world order. But now, when the West uh, seeing India as in uh, on a fence or in a Russian side, so a lot right. of stories are coming up. So Western media, the Western governments are focusing more on what's happening in India. Right. So it is good for us. Otherwise, our voices were never heard before. The other day, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau announced that they are going to uh, proceed with an inquiry and appointed a former justice uh, from the courts to lead that inquiry into foreign interference in Canadian elections. Do you think that goes far enough to, uh, to for the Canadian government to investigate and focus only on the elections, or should they broaden that to investigate all activities of foreign governments, such as the potential involvement in the uh, in the murder and assassination of Mr. Najjar? Well, it, it's, it's supposed to start from somewhere. It will go beyond elections it will go beyond uh, what we are seeing it so it, it need to start from somewhere right so it, it's it's a good start that we that canadian government even though from last six seven years uh i personally felt that way that canadian officials are like they are not aggressive when it comes to the statement when it comes to the indian officials giving statements against canada so they were very calm or they were very like, you know, uh, but now when the, when Justin Trudeau said that he is going to uh, open an inquiry, the Indian interference in Canada, I think it's a good start. Excellent. Well, that's great. I'm going to be uh, visiting today. Well, obviously I'm here now, uh, but I'll be back again tomorrow for a good part of the day and uh, hope to interact with a lot of people and uh, really excited to see how this turnout is going to happen. With that said, do you think that the rest of the world is really focused on the results of this vote? Right now, the G20, if you uh, Google G20 events and all the news, the Khalistan have overshadowed it. Right. They overshadow it. Uh, Rishi Sunak, the Prime Minister of uh, UK, gave a statement of Khalistan extremism mm -hmm. that we will not let it happen, but there's no extremism. Right. So they're already... British government has already institutions and measures to counter any kind of extremism. It's not something that a new thing. Well, when I said the UK Prime Minister has given a statement about Khalistan, yeah. so so that's their headline. So Prime Minister Trudeau said the inquiry about foreign interference is about Khalistan. Right. So you can see when a two country, two, the, the Prime Minister from the two countries are visiting India, the main primate, primary uh, focus is the Khalistan. Right. So uh, I think uh, it's good for us that our issue is being discussed, our issue is being highlighted. Right. Yeah. Excellent. Well, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. I appreciate you taking the time, and I hope that we can spend some more time over the next two days uh, as things allow. We know that you're very busy getting set up, and tomorrow's going to be even busier. So, yes, and uh, uh, I'll request you. Uh, that tomorrow the, the Punjab Referendum Commission will be here. Yes. So more importantly that you should uh, interview them. Yes, the I'll Punjab be here all day yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm planning on being here all day. Yeah. Uh, so by all means, I'm happy to uh, interview whoever's available, and uh, that's wonderful. Thank you. Excellent, thank you. Thank you. Now, before we finish, if I can get you to state your name, spell it, and then your role, your position. Uh, Jagdeep Singh, start with J-A-G-D-E-E. -E. P, last name Singh, S-I-N-G-H, and I'm a Sikh activist. 
Excellent. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time today. Once again, thank you to Jagdeep Singh, a self-proclaimed Sikh activist who was at the Surrey, British Columbia location for the referendum on Khalistan. We appreciate you taking the time to speak with us. And for our audience members, once again, we appreciate when you like, follow, and subscribe to our platforms on social media. In addition, always feel welcome to reach out to us via email at message at satledgetv.com. Once again, this is James Kuzno for Satledge TV in Vancouver, British Columbia.